In retirement, you'll need your investments to provide you with an income because you'll no longer have work-related earnings to rely on. So what investments should you use to fund your retirement? In this video, I'm gonna give you seven types of investments for retirement, and I'll be ranking them from worst to best, including the pros and cons of each. Hey there, I'm Chris Strano, the founder of Superguy, your number one resource for planning retirement. I'm also managing partner of retirement planning firm, Toro Wealth. This is general information only, and it does not constitute financial advice. So please read the disclaimer found in the description below. So when we're developing a retirement investment strategy, it's extremely important to consider the following factors. Security, you wanna invest your money with a high level of trust. Reliability of income, you wanna make sure that your retirement income is received as expected. Consistency of returns, you want to invest in assets that have a history of generating average long-term returns in line with expectations. Flexibility, you need a retirement income stream that is flexible enough to meet your changing needs. Liquidity, you need to be able to access your money when you need it. Uh, and the ability to keep pace with inflation. You need to make sure that your retirement income keeps pace with the cost of living so that your purchasing power does not erode over time. Therefore, I've used these factors as part of the criteria when ranking investments. Also, just a quick one before we get into it, many people consider superannuation itself to be an investment. It is not, it is simply a structure that offers concessional tax treatment. There are a number of retirement investment options available to you, and these investments can either be held inside or outside the superannuation environment. So for the purposes of this countdown, we'll be focusing on the actual type of investment not whether it's owned inside or outside super. Are you ready? Here's what I reckon are the best retirement investments in order from worst to best. Coming in at number seven, bank accounts. A bank account is a basic investment option that provides you with an interest payment each month on your balance that you've saved. It's simple, it's easy to set up, uh, it's easy to manage and everyone knows how to use one. It's that bad of an investment option for retirement that it almost didn't make the cut but more people than you think use bank accounts as their only retirement investment option. So it's in. On average, a bank account will provide a 3% annual return over a 30 year retirement period. And the pros of a bank account are the amount in your bank account can be relied upon as a constant value and it'll only change based on the deposits, withdrawals and the interest. Therefore, you know exactly how much you have at any given time. Plus, there's generally no fees associated with bank accounts and they are government guaranteed up to $250,000 per person per institution. Uh, the cons of bank accounts is that the interest earned is quite low compared to other types of investments and bank accounts lose purchasing power over time due to inflation. My conclusion, while bank accounts are passive and easy to use, your returns are small and you will lose purchasing power over time. They're good for keeping emergency funds in or uh, upcoming capital expenses, but that's about it. My rating for bank accounts as an investment is three out of 10. Next in at number six, term deposits. A term deposit is where you invest a lump sum amount with a bank for a predetermined time frame and an agreed upon interest rate. Your lump sum amount is then returned in full at the end of the term together with the accumulated interest. And a term deposit can range from one month to five years. Uh, an average interest rate for a term deposit would probably probably be around 4% per year. So for every $100,000 invested, you would receive $4,000 per year income. Okay, let's have a look at the pros and cons. The pros are similar to a bank account, the balance won't fluctuate in value. There are no fees and it's government guaranteed up to $250,000. And of course the cons are lower long-term returns compared to other types of investments, uh, inflation risk and loss of purchasing power over time. So would I recommend a term deposit for retirement investing? Well, it's better than a bank account, I guess. And it could be an idea to keep a particular amount in term deposits to cover any short uh, to medium term capital expenses. Um, but given that retirement will last 30 years or more, it would be better to include some growth orientated investments as part of your overall uh, retirement portfolio, in my opinion. My rating for term deposits as a retirement investment option, four out of 10. Moving on, coming in fifth spot, international shares. International shares are equity ownership in companies that are located outside of Australia. Uh, they provide the opportunity for capital growth and can also pay income in the form of dividends, neither of which are guaranteed. Uh, some examples of international shares that you've probably heard of include Amazon, Apple, BP, Toyota, Walmart, Sony, Pfizer, and Nestle. 
Um, you can buy international shares through trading platforms offered by banks, uh, as well as industry super funds, most retail super funds, um, and on average over a 30 year period, international shares will probably produce returns at around 8% per annum. Let's take a look at the pros and cons of international shares. The pros are by providing um, the potential for capital growth and dividends, you can achieve retirement income that keeps pace with inflation, so you're not losing purchasing power over time. Also, diversification can be achieved across a range of countries, economies, industries, uh, developed and emerging regions, uh, and all of this can reduce overall risk uh, by providing exposure to different types of returns. Another pro is that international equities can be achieved via Australian fund managers, uh, making international shares relatively easy to be bought and sold, and pretty quickly too. And the cons? Well, it can sometimes be difficult to understand how and where to invest in international shares. Brokerage costs are often higher if you wish to invest in specific companies listed on international markets. And in general, dividend yields for international shares are lower compared to Australian shares and are not tax effective. My conclusion? Including international shares as part of your retirement investments is great for diversification, particularly considering that Australia makes up only approximately 2% of the global economy. However, it can be difficult and more expensive to purchase individual international shares, as well as keep abreast of the world's economic activity and how that could affect your retirement investments. So for that reason, I give international shares a rating of five out of 10. Before I get to number four, if you're liking this video so far, please click the thumbs up button to let me know. Uh, it's a small act and it encourages me to make more videos just like this. All right, number four on the list is investment properties. Uh, an investment property is a residential or commercial property that's owned by you, but rented out to someone to occupy. Uh, an investment property can increase in capital value if demand for your property increases, and it will also provide a regular income in the form of rent. So an average annual return for property would probably be around seven to eight percent per year after expenses, but do they make a good in, uh, investment choice for retirement? Let's have a look at the pros and cons. The pros are property provides regular reliable income that can be received in the form of rent for an agreed period of time. And over time, as a whole, properties tend to increase in value. And a property is a tangible asset, meaning that you can see it, you can touch it, you can drive past it, which can provide comfort. And the cons? If your investment property makes up the large majority of your investment uh, retirement investments, you will have all of your eggs in one basket, which is a risk if it doesn't produce the expected returns. Also, it's an illiquid investment. They take at least a month to sell and they cannot be partially sold, and it may be difficult to sell in unfavorable market conditions. Another con is that renters and tenants are getting ever increasing legal rights, making being a landlord less enticing. Also, there are often regular costs such as agent fees, uh, maintenance, rates, and so on, as well as the potential of larger costs being incurred. And there's also bigger costs when purchasing, such as stamp duty, and selling, such as agent fees. That sounds like a lot of cons. So what's my overall opinion on property for an investment option? Well. Australians love property, but can sometimes turn a blind eye to its shortcomings as an investment. As a whole, investment properties can provide stability of income uh, and reasonable capital growth. However, unlike shares and managed funds, annuities, term deposits, and bank accounts, properties also do incur non-negotiable running costs, non-negotiable time input, and provide no immediate liquidity. My score for investment properties is a six out of 10. But remember, we're talking about retirement investments here. So before I get people hating me, please keep that in mind. All right, we've made it to the top three. Number three on the list is lifetime annuities. So a lifetime annuity provides you with a guaranteed income for the remainder of your life, regardless of how long you live. And the way it works is that you purchase an annuity with a lump sum amount, say $300,000, $400,000 or more, in exchange for a guaranteed known income payment of maybe two, two and a half thousand dollars every month for the rest of your life. The amount you receive in regular payments is calculated based on the amount invested in the annuity, the interest rate on offer, uh, your age at commencement, and your statistical life expectancy. Annuities will generally offer an interest rate of around 6%, depending on the economic environment at the time, and you can buy annuities through your financial institution or a specific annuity provider. 
Let's look at the pros and cons. Okay, the pros are an annuity is specifically designed for retirees and can be favorably assessed for Centrelink purposes. Plus, you can be confident in knowing the exact income that you'll be receiving for the remainder of your life. And the ups and downs of investment markets are not going to impact your income. The cons are that the overall return received from a lifetime annuity uh, throughout a person's retirement is generally lower than what could be achieved on average through shares and property. Also, once purchased, lump sum withdrawals cannot be made from lifetime annuities and they are rarely closed down. Annuities are not designed to provide liquidity. So what's my conclusion? Well, annuities are a great conservative retirement strategy that provide a high level of certainty with little flexibility. Uh, having an annuity as your only retirement investment can be quite restrictive, uh, but including maybe a smaller annuity as part of your overall retirement plan might be a suitable investment strategy. I give annuities a rating of 7 out of 10. Okay, we're getting close. My number two investment option for retirees are Australian shares. Australian shares are equity ownership in Australian companies. As an Australian, you are likely to be familiar with the companies you own shares in and possibly even consume their products or services such as Commonwealth Bank, BHP, Telstra and Woolworths. Um, to buy Australian shares in your personal name or a self-managed super fund, you would need to set up a trading platform account. Uh, otherwise, if you have an industry super fund or retail super fund, you'll need to see if they offer a direct investment option to trade shares because not all of them do. So you'll need to check that out. Australian shares as a whole should provide a return of around 9% per year on average throughout a person's uh, retirement life. So what are the pros and cons of Australian shares? Well, the pros are that Australian shares generally provide a good balance of capital growth and income, often in the form of tax effective franc dividends. And Australian shares can be bought and sold quite quickly and at a low cost. The cons of Australian shares are that they're volatile and therefore your investment value will fluctuate up and down, sometimes significantly. Uh, you need to be comfortable that your investment balance could fall by 40% or more in extreme conditions. Uh, poor economic conditions can also cause dividend payments to reduce considerably, and it might be confusing as to which shares to buy. So are Australian shares a good option? Well, Australian shares are a familiar asset class for most Australians. Uh, a well-diversified portfolio can provide good long-term growth and regular tax-effective income that keeps pace with inflation. But relying solely on Australian shares for your retirement portfolio is not for the faint-hearted. We've seen this asset class temporarily drop by more than 50%, and that's enough to make anyone cry, even me, and I'm pretty tough. As a retiree, Australian shares will usually form at least some portion of your retirement investment portfolio. And drumroll, the number one best retirement investment option, in my opinion, is a diversified index managed fund or ETF. A diversified index managed fund or ETF will provide exposure to a range of asset classes, including shares, property, fixed interest at a low cost. It is a passive investment option that requires minimal input and is a set and forget retirement investment that can give some sound long-term returns. The pros of this are that a diversified managed fund can be as conservative or aggressive as you choose you have the ability to decide the level of risk and the expected long-term returns. They give low-cost exposure to a range of asset classes, geographical jurisdictions, uh, industries, sectors with a good mix of capital growth and income, and they're simple to manage and can be bought and sold pretty easily and relatively quickly. But what about the cons? Well, you won't always know what the underlying assets are due to there being so many, which can mean limited transparency. Also, fees are payable, albeit not directly by you, they are deducted from the managed fund. However, such fees are relatively low anyway. Another thing to consider is that your balance could rise or fall by more than 40% in any one year if you were to choose an aggressive index fund. But the nuts and bolts of it is that it's a diversified index fund. It's low cost and it'll provide you with somewhat predictable long-term returns at a level of risk that you're comfortable with making the outcome of your retirement plan more certain. And for this reason, my rating is a 10 out of 10. So now that you know my ranking and the pros and cons of retirement investment options, the best investment advice I can give you is to reverse engineer how you should invest for retirement. The first step to doing this is to define your retirement objectives and what you would like to achieve. 
Then the next step is to determine the capital sum and the average investment return required to meet those objectives in conjunction with other forms of income such as the age pension. And then the final step is to find an investment that has a good probability of achieving those objectives and the expected returns over a 30 year period. For example, you might say, okay, if we need $750,000 to retire at age 65 for an income of 60,000 per year at an average return of 6.5% per annum, then let's go and find a diversified fund that has that expected level of return. And this is why I believe a low cost diversified index portfolio is a 10 out of 10, because you can essentially choose the level of expected risk and return within reason, and it's highly diversified. Either way, it's always best to seek investment advice from a licensed financial advisor. If you like the video, please subscribe. Stay super.